Well, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to this afternoon's uh, webinar, which will serve as a quick uh, introduction on how, essentially, uh, to obtain uh, an electronic uh, bond so that you can do business uh, with us and then upload that same electronic bond on the Merck system, which is the system that DCC is using for uh, its uh, electronic procurement. So on this slide, you have an idea of who the participants are this afternoon. And the next slide will give you a quick run on the uh, agenda. So I'll do some uh, quick introductions after I run through the agenda, and then we'll go through uh, how we got to where we are today uh, from the SAC, the Surete Association of Canada, and from myself at uh, Defense Construction Canada. Uh, and then we'll go over a little bit of what is a, a digital bond. So a difference between uh, what we, we, we consider a digital bond versus maybe an electronic bond. I know we use e-bond or electronic bond versus digital quite interchangeably, but we'll, we'll explain the, the, the difference between the two. And then how to uh, request your bond, how to uh, submit your bond, and how the bond is uh, verified, which is probably the key point on a digital bond. And then Mertz will uh, run through some slides to uh, basically explain to our supplier or contractor audience uh, who haven't had a chance to participate on one of the regional sessions that we've done today, uh, how to upload their uh, electronic bond onto the Merck system when they're bidding for uh, DCC opportunities. Next slide, please. Uh, Richard, can I just please ask you if you could speak closer perhaps to your phone as a lot of people are saying that they can barely hear you. And okay. we have a very... Okay. Okay, great, thanks. Uh, this afternoon on the uh, start lead from uh, Defense Construction Canada, I'm the project manager for the uh, launching of the e-procurement system here at the DCC. For Mercs, uh, we should have Mr. Paul Bodnoff online. Uh, representative from Bobalons is uh, Mr. Steve Muxlow. And then for the uh, Surte Association of Canada, we have Steve Ness. And for Zenex Enterprises, we have uh, Loris Haig. So the next presenter is uh, Steve Ness. Thank you, Richard, and good afternoon to everyone. Um, just start, uh, before I get into anything, just tell you a little bit about who we are. The, uh, the Surte Association of Canada were the national trade advocacy group for the surety industry and we represent of course surety companies, reinsurers, brokers and pretty much anyone else who has an interest in the surety business, lawyers, consultants and so on. Uh, our members, uh, member surety companies that is, account for about 97 percent of the surety premium written across the country. Um, as to how it all started, um, it's really been a slow process. Uh, electronic tendering and, uh, and e-bonding uh, has uh, been a long time coming. Our association has worked with the industry for really intensively for the last six years to, to help with the transition from paper to digital bonds. And of course, uh, we don't issue bonds uh, ourselves, but we uh, do uh, fulfill the role of a facilitator and, uh, and an information resource. Uh, in that role, we've published an awful lot of information, which uh, you can access from our website, www.suretycanada.com. Uh, we encourage you to go there. There's a, a great deal of uh, background and uh, information that could, could answer a lot of questions. Uh, and we also help, actively help users of bonds or potential users of bonds, like Defense Construction Canada, as they make the transition from the paper world to the uh, digital world. Um, as to the advantages of uh, digital tendering and digital bonding, I mean, I would think for the most part they're fairly obvious. The ease of delivery, no more uh, jumping in your car and engaging in a race against traffic to, to, to make the tender closing. Uh, cost savings in the sense that you're, uh, you're not paying now courier charges and all the processing charges that you normally would. Uh, also, um, the, a great advantage in the re reduction, uh, we believe, of errors. Uh, 
using an, an electronic uh, or a digital bond system, and Steve and Loris will get into that, I think, momentarily. Um, I just want to add, uh, and I think this will become obvious as we go through the, the rest of the session today, that uh, digital bonding, like, like uh, just like e-procurement, it's not in and of itself di uh, difficult. It, it ain't rocket science. It's just a radically different way of doing things. And like anything else, when there's a radical change, the people who are on the front lines and doing it are just going to need time to wrap their heads around it and adapt. Um, now, uh, as to the criteria, or I guess what makes for a, a real digital bond, um, there are uh, we identified three, and I and I hesitate to say we because this really isn't our list. Uh, back several years ago, we started sitting down with owners and saying, "Look, what is it that uh, would make you?" move from paper to digital. Uh, what are your concerns? What are the, the, the things that you would want to see a, a digital bond system use? And uh, they were the ones that uh, really identified these three criteria. criteria. The, uh, the integrity uh, was, was uh, paramount. This is, in other words, the, the assurance that the document received is the true document that had been executed and hasn't been changed and altered in any way. Uh, secure access, uh, that's uh, uh, obviously the, uh, the, the comfort in knowing that only the people who should have access to that document uh, can have access to it. And of course, verifiability and enforceability. Uh, verifiability is, is of course the assurance that the bond uh, that has been has been executed by the parties that were identified, i.e., the surety and the contractor, and that no one else had uh, was was able to touch it or or alter it. Um, we are we okay? Are we back? Okay. Yes, you're back. Sorry, there was an echo, so I fixed that. Oh, okay. Go ahead. Um, uh, verifiability and enforceability. Uh, the verifiability is, of course, that knowledge that the, the bond has been executed by the person who uh, is indicated that they executed it, the, the surety and the contractor and the responsible person. And enforceability is, of course, that uh, that bond will be enforceable in law. Uh, where are we now? <laughs> right here. Uh, over the last uh, year, we've, we've noticed a very sharp increase in construction buyers who are making that transition now to uh, uh, electronic tendering and bonding. And uh, we are very busy uh, with sessions like this and working with other owners across the country in uh, making that transition happen. And uh, with that, I'll, I'll hand it back to Richard and uh, I'll be available for any questions. Right, thank you, Steve. Um, we at uh, DCC have been working on our e procurement project for about uh, three three years, and we were in fact uh, one of the owners that uh, participated with the Surete Association in a trial for uh, electronic bonds back in the end of uh, 2012. And since then, through all the discussions and meetings and briefings with various groups. There's always a few uh, points that seem to be uh, coming up all the time. So some of them are on the bond form itself. Uh, we use uh, what I'll call the federal bond form, so Public Works or PSPC now as they're called, Public Services and Procurement Canada, uh, use the same uh, type of bond forms that, uh, that we use. And in that form, the agreement to bond, which sometimes suppliers uh, tend to attach to their tender, uh, it's embedded inside of our bid bond. So there's no need for the uh, construction industry to attach an, an agreement to bond for the subsequent, so the uh, performance bond and the labor and material bonds. Uh, that's already covered in our, in our bid bond. Obviously, the bid bond will have to be submitted through the Merge system. That's the platform that we have selected through an RFP process. And therefore, uh, once we publish 
uh, or advertise a new opportunity on the Merck system, <clears throat> people will see quickly when they read the abstract that uh, this requires an electronic bid submission, and by default, then it'll be also an electronic bond will have to be, obviously, if the job requires bonding. If the job is very small, it may or may not require a bond. But if a bond is required, then definitely will have to be submitted through the Merck system. And you'll have a few screenshots near the end of the presentation today to, that will show you how that happens. Verif verifiability, we've, we've talked about that. I won't go into that anymore. And you'll, you'll get a bit of an example later on how that, that happens. Uh, we've had some questions on the other bonds, the performance and the labor and material bonds. Sure, uh, you can submit them to us uh, electronically. Uh, you just won't have the opportunity to submit them through the Merck system. They will just have to be sent by email to the identified uh, contract coordinator on the contract award if you're awarded the contract. Uh, signatures. Uh, currently, we have not changed our, our bond form, and it's creating a bit of confusion. But uh, we're going forward with the thought that in the electronic world, the witness uh, is the actual uh, system itself that uh, allows the the bidder or the contractor, the uh, bonding company, uh, to sign and seal the bond. So for that uh, to happen, they have to have credentials with the system. They have to have registered with the system. Uh, so we're we're going forward with with the idea that. Uh, a signature for a witness is no longer required in the electronic world. You're going to see a line still there on our bond, and, and I'm working with uh, internally here to see what we can do about that, because we're going to have a, a transition period where we have both paper and electronic uh, tenders out there while we're transitioning to, uh, to the electronic world. The seals, there's no change on, on that side of the fence. Uh, if you're in a jurisdiction uh, where the contractor uh, is not necessarily required to apply a seal, then the same same type of legal requirements apply to an electronic bond. The only difference here is that the companies, both the Certe and the contractors, if you're in a jurisdiction that requires seals, uh, then you'll have to get your electronic seals produced by one of the two firms that uh, that are with us today, Mobile Bonds or uh, Xenex. And they may uh, touch base on that a little later. So that's all I have for, for me this afternoon. I will pass it back to the next uh, panelist. Thank you, Richard. It's um, Steve Muxo here from Mobile uh, It's uh, Steve Muxo from Mobile Bonds. And I'm going to expand a little bit more on, on what Steve Ness from the Surety Association and, and uh, Richard uh, from DCC uh, just on a little bit on the the e-bonding, um, the, the the surety industry uh, set, developed a set of guidelines uh, in terms of setting up what you know what constitutes a, an e-bond, and also it sets a number of different parameters uh, around what you know an e-bond system uh, or how it's supposed to work. And you, as you can see, there's a number of points listed on the screen. Um, in terms of talking at a high level, just the, that integrity of content that Steve Ness had mentioned of the digital signatures and the digital seals. And, and behind the digital signature, it's the actual software um, that will create or apply your signature to the document. And it's got some unique code uh, in uh, within it uh, that makes it uh, identifiable and a, a unique um, uh, uh, document. <clears throat> uh, some of the other requirements that the industry has set out is, is that uh, they want the bond to be uh, viewed and printed. I think what really comes down to is they want to be able to see the words on the, the paper uh, and it has to be stored in something that's a, a universal format and typically you'll find um, uh, out of both systems uh, they're both they're uh, produced in a PDF format um, the, uh, the next part on the verification piece which is particularly important for defense construction and and other owners um, they want the verification to uh, be active for a particular bond for the life of, of the document, and that the results um, of that verification process, it's just it's clear that uh, the document passes or, or fail. Um, if I can just move to the next screen. Uh, so <clears throat> I guess really was what does the, the bond look like? And you're probably looking at the uh, screen. 
looking at the screen right now wondering uh, it's not really much different from what you're used to today. You can see uh, it's probably not uh, clear, but it's, it's, it's words. And I'm just pointing out that there's the digital signatures that have been applied to the document um, at the bottom. And this document uh, presupposes that it was for um, a project in Quebec, and therefore the, the corporate seals weren't required. All right, so if we, oops, I will hand it off now to Dolores. Uh, thank you, Steve. Um, the next uh, point we need to cover is, okay, so what's the difference between a digital and an electronic bond? I mean, uh, from most people, sort of the terms are interchangeable, but in order for the definition to be a little bit clearer, uh, we need to uh, clarify a little bit that there is a difference between the two. Uh, an electronic bond, uh, imply, a digital bond, implies that it is verifiable. There is a little bit of a code in there that, that allows the document to be verified for its authenticity, for its, uh, its, its content and, and the validity of the document. An electronic bond implies that it is transferable through electronic means. In other words, a scanned version of a paper bond, which is signed and sealed, uh, it's really an image of a of a of a uh, of a bond, and it's not really does not qualify or under the de definition of of a digital bond. So, if you look at it in most cases, that is the basic difference between the two. Now, in most cases, the scanned PDF therefore is not what you call a digital bond. A single document of a bond that is deposited for a long-term period forever and ever as, as, as a blanket is not what you call... Uh, Richard? Yeah, go ahead. Sorry? And the next one is, uh, is if you, uh, specifically, if it's an encrypted number on the bond and uh, that's what you're verifying with, that's not what we call a digital bond because none of those are able to verify the actual contents. Can I have the next slide, please? Now, if you look at this particular bond, and is this a digital bond, you will see the difference, and that is the seal is shaded out, and uh, that's the usual traditional way we do it, and this is, this is what you, it, it, it appears to be a scanned version of the bond. Now, this document is not really verifiable. Can I have the next slide, please? Now, a wise person from the Sheridan Association of Canada by the name of Steve Ness once told me, he said, you give me a picture of a, of a bond, which is a scan bond being a picture, you give me a picture uh, and I'll give you money, a picture of money instead of real money. And I thought I liked that so much, I'd like, I wanted to share it with everybody because it really, it really reflects exactly the statement of what the difference is between an electronic and, and, and a digital bond. Can I have the next? slide. Now, if you look at this document, you will see now that the signature and the seal looks different. And it's not the shaded signature or seal. And that's the way I, I, apparently you can, from the appearances, recognize that this is not a scanned version. And this is the basically a verifiable version. Can I have the next slide? Now, how does the whole process work? The process of you, basically what happens at the beginning, Defense Construction Canada will be publishing or uh, the, within Merck's the actual document uh, or the documents, the, the submission documents or the, uh, the tender documents. Could you click please the next slide? Now, Merck's will, will publish and then the contractor or the, or the principal will be downloading the actual um, documents, the bid documents. Then they will go with the same way that they currently do, go to their contractor and request the bond. Then the, the, the contractor will be, uh, will, based on the authorities that they have from the surety, or the, uh, the, 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 they will be able to produce that bond in, in some kind of a method, which this entire process does not change for the paper as it does for the electronic. Click, please. Now, what does change is this part. Instead of shipping it 
via courier, the broker will upload it to one of our systems, either uh, Signature Master or Mobile Bonds, and then we'll invite the, the contractor to be able to come in and finalize the bond itself and the documents. When you, uh, when, when, they, when, when everything is finalized, the contractor will download the documents, uh, the, the, and, and the, which is going to be a digital electronic, uh, a digital uh, PDF document of the bond itself. Now that document will be attached together with the rest of the submission documents in a folder until the time that it is uploaded towards to the Merck system. And when they are ready and it's done and it's re they're ready to uh, to upload it, they will upload it to the Merck system. Okay? Can I have a? Could you click this? Now, once that is in the Merck system, the Merck, Merck system will make it available uh, to Defense Construction Canada after the actual uh, tender closing time, uh, not before. At which point, could you click these? Defense Construction Canada, once they have that document, they will be able to go in and verify it and, uh, and its authenticity. Also, any other person who has access to that document will be able to verify it. Could you click, please? How is the verifiability? I'll turn over that to Steve. Okay, thank you, Loris. Um, so I'm, I'm just going to circle back uh, to the verification process, which uh, I think you, you've probably heard uh, a couple of times from a, a number of different speakers. Uh, and so what you're looking at on the screen is just a, a simple illustration of, of what happens. That it, the, the picture of the, the sealed document on the left-hand side is to represent um, a sign, an executed bond. It could be in the hands of defense construction or some other owner. Uh, and depending on you know, which uh, system that you're using, um, there's a place that you can click within that PDF uh, document that will trigger the, the verification process. And, and in this particular case, uh, you will, if you trigger the, the, the process from the bond, it will take you to uh, the website where then you, you're just uploading the, the document. And what it happens is it compares the document that, that the owner has to the document that's stored uh, in the server. And uh, if it's an exact match, then you'll get a, a message that says uh, at the bottom of the screen, uh, you can see it probably just faintly in green that the, the documents have been compared and they've, they've, uh, they match and they, they've been verified. Um, and if we go to the next slide, I can just show you quickly another example of the other system. Uh, and again, and they will give you uh, sort of in a similar fashion the, uh, the message that it passes uh, in green or a compromised bond uh, that's in red. All right, and then we'll move on to the, the next slide. So I'm um, going to switch gears a little bit on the, the topic um, and because I know that you know many people are interested in kind of what is involved in setting up with a particular e-bond system, such as mobile bonds or, or Xenix uh, Enterprises. And generally speaking, um, uh, this slide is really just kind of cover just the, the general parts of it for, for both systems. Um, and it's really, it starts with, you know, depending uh, the contractor, the bidder, and the bonding company, just having a discussion as to which system that they want to use uh, together. Uh, and usually it, it's one that, that best suits their, their needs. And um, when, once you've done that, then I, I've set it up so that there's kind of a, a to-do list for, uh, for the vendor and contractor and the, the broker and the bonding company. And a lot of the points are similar. Um, it is only just to indicate that um, once you're inside the system, you have to do a little bit of things on your end to tell the system about, you know, who in your organization uh, is able to, to use the, the system or, or not use it. And so just at a very high level, um, the, the setup for both the broker and the contractor, again, is just, you know, people, um, you know, do they have certain authorities to do things with, within the system and, and things like that that would take care of the, the setup. Um, Two is obtaining a, a digital corporate seal, um, and that for the the broker, that's usually going out to the bonding company and asking for that corporate seal. Uh, and then I've another point uh, just under the the broker and bonding company column is, is just creating a relationship between 
between the, the contractor broker and the bonding company in, in the respective system, um, just so that the system knows uh, uh, who's doing what um, to, to produce a, a unique bond. Um, so after all that, whoops, um, just we'll go back. So it, the main point is really just to give yourself some time to, to set up. I know Loris and I have, have both um, had the experience of, of somebody calling us to say, hey, we need an e-bond this afternoon, uh, but we haven't set up yet. Um, and we've been, we we're able to, to accommodate that. But we, we do suggest that in terms of um, just reaching out to us and saying, but let's try to get uh, familiar with the system uh, so that you don't have the, the anxiety of a, a tender, a hard de tender closing at, at two or three o'clock in the afternoon. Uh, so the next slide. Uh, the question is just to frequently, uh, frequently asked question is how long does it take an account to be set up? We're, we're saying it's less than 30 minutes, probably probably even less than that. Um, but it, it's going to really kind of depend on you know how many people are supposed to be using the system, and in some cases just you know how fast you can get the information uh, into it. Uh, the next question is is what if my broker's not ready uh, for e-bonds? I think both Loris and I would be, be happy to, to help them out, get them set up uh, as quickly as possible um, so that you can get your e-bonds uh, just as fast. And with that, I'm going to pass this on to Paul. Hi, and thank you. So you've uh, come to Merck's and you've downloaded the, uh, the bidding documents. Uh, you've identified a, a broker, you've worked with one of the authentication or verification providers, and, uh, and now you're trying to understand how, how do I get this to, to defense construction. So just, just as a bit of a background for everyone, um, the electronic bid submission process on Mercs, whether there's a bond required or not for everybody's information is very highly secure is fully audited and therefore all the all the transactional information is is stored within the Merck system and allows you to uh, revise uh, and make changes right up until the time of closing. Uh, to the DCC contractor and supplier community uh, there are no additional fees required uh, beyond your subscription in order to submit electronically to Mercs um, and as mentioned earlier there's it, it eliminates the geographical or or uh, snowstorm related disadvantages that one, a supplier in, a, in one end of the city might have or, over another or, or someone who's located uh, in Ottawa might have over someone in, in Vancouver. Um, and that, that evens the playing field for everyone. And, and submissions are certainly less prone to error because the instructions are complete and your ability to submit can be controlled based on your fulfilling the, the obligations of the submission. And Exactly as, as occurs with paper-based submissions, um, the bid access is restricted, so DCC has no access to bids until the opportunity is closed, and of course that's what allows you to make changes right up until the time of closing. Um, the advice we give people on, on a daily basis when they, when they contact our call center is, is to, to, to make sure that you, you, after you've downloaded the bidding documents, uh, review them thoroughly. Uh, and now in the case of DCC, make sure you pay special attention to the bonding requirements that will be clearly stated uh, with, within those documents. Uh, as Steve and, and Loris uh, will, will attest to, it's very important that you acquire the digital bond as early as in, in the process as possible, so you don't want to be waiting till the last minute. And the other thing that's extremely important is that you make sure that you have your uh, electronic bid submission pin uh, available at the time you're going to be submitting to Mercs and I'll show you some screenshots of that uh, in a few moments. And of course uh, the Mercs call center uh, customer support group is available at the 800 number you see there um, and will uh, help you through the process of obtaining a PIN. Um, we've, we've done things on short turnaround time before but we certainly recommend that, that people leave as much uh, time in front of the, uh, the, the closing date to obtain the PIN. You only need one PIN as an organization. Uh, that PIN will uh, represent your organization for uh, whether you're submitting to DCC or, or to anybody else. Um, and it covers all the submissions that you're going to do going forward. 
Uh, reminder that the person who's going to request the PIN, and um, again, the call center can help you through that, must have the authority to bind the organization to the terms and conditions that are stipulated in the bidding documents. Uh, and I'll reiterate that allow enough time prior to close for those documents that you're submitting to be uploaded into the system. Uh, so if the PDF is large, then it's going to take longer for it to upload, and you don't want to be caught in a situation uh, at one minute to four where you're starting your upload and the opportunity closes at four o'clock. Um, and, and I will uh, uh, tout the, the resources of the Surety Association. Um, they have invested significant time and effort in, in laying the groundwork for uh, electronic bonding to be uh, an acceptable method in Canada. Uh, they've done much of the heavy lifting and, and legwork and, and there's certainly significant and uh, important information available on their website. And we certainly suggest people visit their, uh, their website to, to gather more information. So, You've, uh, you've downloaded the bidding documents, you've uh, done all the things you're supposed to, and it's time to, uh, to submit. So the, the process is very straightforward. It's, it's just a step-by-step. -step. Um, you'll log into your Merck's account and you will go to the opportunity and you'll want to be placing a bid. Excuse me. Um, and you'll see the, the kinds of documents that may be included in a bid submission. You'll also notice up on the top right hand corner of the, or about a third of the way down, it actually shows you when the opportunity is, is scheduled to close. So you'll always have a countdown clock, excuse me, to, to show you that. Uh, you'll pick the kind of document that you need to supply. In this case, it's a, it's a bid bond. And you will go and retrieve it from wherever you've got it stored within your local system and add it to the, to the submission. Um, the system will then confirm back to you that, that you have successfully uploaded it. That's not the end of the process. Um, the, you have to make a, a formal click to submit it. And uh, that action will finalize your submission uh, into the Merck's database. Uh, and you'll be presented uh, with a screen that uh, asks you to identify yourselves with the PIN number that you acquired from Merck's. Uh, and you'll see the last step in the process in the bottom right hand corner. Sorry, if you go back one, one slide, you'll see the, the, the final thing that you need to do at the end of the process is to submit that bid. That locks it into the repository, um, but still provides you the ability at any time to, uh, to remove it and uh, replace the bid that you're, uh, that you're submitting or any other associated bidding documents. And once you've done that, uh, the system will, uh, the next slide will show, will provide you uh, with a screen with information that validates that your submission has been successfully uh, received by, the, by, the, by Merck's and it also gives you the ability to download a PDF version so you have an electronic record of it as well as um, a, uh, a button to be able to print hard copy if you want to, to want to store it. So that, that concludes the, the formal part of the, of the presentation. I'm going to hand the microphone back to Isabel. And um, there are a number of questions, of course, that have been submitted by people. We do uh, encourage you to please, through the, uh, the, the questions uh, box on your, uh, on, on your screen, to please uh, enter any questions you'd like to have any of us answer this afternoon. And I'm going to hand it back to uh, Thank you, Paul. Uh, so there's quite a few questions that have popped up. Uh, one of the ones uh, that ha one of the questions that's been repeated a few times is when is this come into effect? So I'll take I'll let Richard take that question. Uh, we're rolling out uh, e-procurement by region. Uh, Quebec was the first uh, region to launch into e-procurement, and their first uh, solicitation or a tender that will require um, potentially require uh, an e-bond uh, would potentially go on the street uh, next week or in the very near future. Uh, we're we're on schedule. They launched uh, approximately a month ago, and and we had given ourselves about a month for them to put out a few tenders that did not require any bid security. 
and now they're going to fall into the stage of uh, issuing bid security. The other regions uh, will be coming online, uh, <coughs> Atlantic, uh, Ontario, and the National Capital Region, so the Ottawa area will be coming online uh, around early to mid-April. Uh, and they too will go through the same process of doing about a month of uh, tenders with no bid security requirements and then sometime in early May they'll start uh, putting out tenders that uh, would require some uh, e-bond and in the west similar fashion uh, they would rule out uh, mid-May and then a month of uh, tenders without any bonding requirement followed by uh, contracts or tenders that would require e-bond. So you have, uh, for those uh, uh, that may be thinking of submitting on jobs in the Quebec region, then potentially you have three or four weeks before uh, some of those jobs close with their requirement for uh, e-bonds, and then a few more weeks after that for uh, Atlantic, Ontario, and the NCR. So you have a bit of time left. And that's why we're doing these presentations a bit early so that you do have time to set up in, in both of the system. Thank you, Richard. Uh, so a, a question from Keith is, since the electronic bond is unmodifiable, how do we change the tender date on the bond if the submission date is postponed? Uh, we had that same question uh, with the French group uh, this morning, and uh, as far as I know, it's never been a problem for us in the paper world. For us, the clock on the validity of the tender, and by default the bond, I guess, starts when the tender closes. So if we, DCC, extend the closing date by a week or two, then our, our standard 30-day uh, clock, and if you read our bonds, uh, I think that's it. it I think it says 14 days or unless noted elsewhere in the documents and our documents are, are standard tender form uh, provides for uh, 30 days of validity. Now for some reason that validity period comes close to, to running over then those that have done business with us for a number of years you've probably received a, a little fax uh, asking you to extend the validity of your tender and your bond simply because it's probably taking us a little bit longer than expected to get uh, I don't know additional financing from the Department of National Defense for uh, a tender where the price came in a bit higher so as far as I can tell it, it really hasn't been an issue in the paper world and I don't see it becoming an issue in the electronic world process to us would remain the same. Thank you. I have a question from Sharon. Many brokers and contractors in Alberta, particularly those contractors bidding on the City of Calgary, have already registered with either Mobile Bonds or Xenex. Uh, can they continue to use their accounts for DCC tenders? Absolutely. It's a uh, it's a universal account to be used with any uh, any owner. Okay, and Susan is asking, how do we get our signatures authorized? Well, the question is about uh, submitting to Mercs. Um, the best thing you can do is contact our uh, our call center, and one of the agents will help you through the entire process. And the number will be posted in a moment again. Yes, we'll have our 1-800 number posted at the next slide. Um, Josh, is, Josh is asking, is there a submission confirmation email sent back to the contractor once the bid of, is submitted? There's a screen presented, um, as well as the ability for you to download a PDF version of it or print hard copy for your records. And of course, you can manage your bids within the Merck system from there and see view it historically. Uh, Sharon is asking if there are any costs involved to register for Mercs. Um, so there is a, a subscription requirement um, for Mercs. Uh, so two two options for you. One is if if you only do business um, with Defense Construction and and don't do business with any other uh, owners on Mercs, there is an option for a forty nine ninety annual subscription, which includes the electronic bid submission process. And then if you are already a, a Merck's complete subscriber, which provides you access to everything that's available on Merck's Canadian public tenders, 
Um, that subscription will also provide you with um, the electronic uh, submission uh, costs included in it. Great. Debbie is asking, is the Merck's PIN number only required by contractors or does the surety broker company require one as well? Oh, uh, the PIN, PIN is only for the uh, bidders. The, uh, the broker uh, really has no need for any access to, uh, to Merck's. Right, you'll have because you'll have an account set up with uh, with with your broker, and that, that's all that's required. They'll they'll produce the electronic bond, and then you'll use it in your submission to Merck's using the pin. Yeah, the, the bidders the bidders uh, are the the ones that need the pin to upload the bid bond, but the surte and the brokers don't need a pin from Merck's to to do anything. They really the broker and the surte have little to do with with uh, the upload process into Merck's. Great. Uh, Jeff is asking, is the countdown on the, the, for the bid submittal, submission time zone adjusted? It will, sh the, actually it will uh, show according to the time zone of the closing of the opportunity that's been posted. So in, in DCC's case, um, you know, Rich, I'll let you answer, but I, I assume they're, they all will show in Eastern time. Uh, no, because we have offices uh, coast to coast. So if a uh, little job is closing in Comox and BC, then uh, the closing time will be based on uh, Comox time. Right, and the countdown will be relevant to the closing time. Yeah, so it's uh, based on the locality of, of whoever the user of Merck's that uh, posted the opportunity. So if our contracting person is located, like I said, on the island, or in Edmonton, or Calgary, or Winnipeg, it's, it'll be in the time zone that, that the opportunity is being uh, posted by the by the user. Correct, and you can always hover on the little question widget as well to get more in, more information. Okay, uh, so Karen is asking, do you do you require to have a Merck's account in order to submit bids? The answer yes. would be yes. That, that's how you would do that. Um, so Rick was asking where do you submit the price that he did not see a box for that. So I'll just go back to the screen here. You can see next to the documents tab there's also a pricing tab. So hopefully you see that on your screen. So just below the submission step two of the process you'll see there's a pricing tab and that's where you would enter that information. And then Debbie is asking, if the closing date is extended, do the bonds need to be revised to reflect the new date? Uh, that's the question we answered earlier. The answer is, uh, is no. It's, we haven't had uh, any issues with that on the paper side, and I don't expect uh, to see any changes on the electronic side. Great. Uh, Nidal is asking, or sorry, Lindsay is asking, once the bid has been submitted, if we would like to withdraw our bid, what do we need to do? So right, right in the electronic bid submission process is the ability to actually either modify or withdraw the uh, submission. Mm -hmm. And there are some tutorials there to assist you if you have any, any questions about the Merck system, or you can always call the call center, uh, which will provide you the phone number shortly. Yeah, and they, there might be some people on, well, there are some people on, on the line there that are from uh, Western Canada, and, and we are uh, going across the country doing live uh, sessions through the construction associations, the local construction associations. I'm, in fact, uh, going to be in Edmonton at the Edmonton Construction Association to do the first uh, contractor or bidder trainee uh, session on the, I believe it's the 19th or the 20th of, uh, of April. And then from there, there's also additional uh, DC staff, DCC staff that are going to be in the room. And then from there, they're going to take the presentation and do the same thing uh, on the island, uh, inland in BC and then in Alberta. And on my way back home from, uh, from Edmonton, I'll also do a stopover in Winnipeg on the next day on the 20th or the 21st. Uh, to do a presentation 
at the local construction association. So keep an eye on our on our internet website, which uh, you'll see the link at the end of the presentation there on the on the next slide when we're done with the questions. And keep an eye on your local construction associations as well. So far, we've had the great cooperation from them. They've, they've advertised our, our training sessions uh, internally to their members, and participation so far has been uh, outstanding. Uh, we did three sessions yesterday in, in Halifax, and all three sessions were, were full, and, and uh, people appreciated the, the process. So keep an eye out for us. We're, we're slowly moving towards the west. Great, Richard. You have lots of travel ahead for you. Sounds like fun. <laughs> uh, so a few other questions. There's still more questions about what you typically just, well, what you basically just answered about when is this happening and all that wonderful stuff. So I'll skip through those questions. Uh, do our, so Susan is asking, do our insured have to obtain a pin to get into Mercs to see what bid offers are there for them. I'm not sure exactly what that means. Do our insureds? The responsibility is up to each contractor who potentially interested in bidding on, on a DCC opportunity to, to be connected to Mercs. Um, there's no cost to review the, the abstract notices that, that get posted along with opportunities. Um, but in order to see bidding documents, you'll have to be registered and, and access them that way. Thanks. And then Lynn is asking, if I do understand, both the broker and client must do the bond on the same program as Merck's. No, there's actually no, no connection. I'll let Richard speak as well, but there's no, no connection. Your relationship between the contractor and the surety provider and the authentication or verification company are totally independent. Um, you acquire the bond as you would historically with, for a paper bond in, 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 when you do that process and you would submit it. Uh, but the two things are, are distinct. Yeah, maybe maybe we can get uh, Steve Muxlow from uh, Mobile Bonds to uh, to talk a bit about uh, about that. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. So just just to follow up with with Paul's comment that the, the, the bond systems are, are separate from the Merck system, but uh, you as the, the contractor and the broker need to, to choose one of the systems to work within it to produce the actual bond. Great. Thank you, Steve and Richard. Um, so Faye is asking, will you no longer be able to deliver the bids with a check for the bonding? Very good question. We didn't have that uh, this morning. I do talk about it when I go, when we do our live uh, presentations. But we are working with uh, with Merck's presently to develop a process where the contractors for the smallish jobs who and the contractors who currently use certified checks to be able to do a wire transfer. Uh, so the contractors, when they go in to deposit their bid, they would have a choice of picking either a bid bond or a wire transfer. And if they choose wire transfer, then the Merck system would provide them with DCC's uh, required banking information so as to where the money needs to be sent. And the system would also produce a unique identifier so that we can match your bid with your deposit uh, in our bank account so that we can let the contracting people know, OK, we've received this much money from uh, this person for this specific contract. The unique identifier will have a reference to our project number and contract number. And that's how we'll be able to, to make the match as well as the name of the, your company or the unique identifier that's, that, that's tied with that specific bid from your company. Uh, we're, I think the test environment for the EFT or the electronic funds transfer or the wire transfer is going to be available to me soon in, in April. And if there's no difficulty during the testing phase, then we're hoping to see this go live and be made available uh, later in the month of May. So we are working on a solution to replace the uh, certified checks. OK, great. Thank you, Richard. Uh, so we have, there's quite a few questions, so we might not get to all of the questions 
uh, here live, but we'll keep a, a listing of these questions and, and put them together on the, the DCC site, uh, the address that you can see there on the site. You will also receive an email tomorrow during the day that will give you a link to the recording from today's session if you need to review it or share it with any colleagues. You'll also receive um, the link to the DCC website where you can access the presentation and uh, any other additional information that you require. Um, there are some, a bunch of questions here with regards to Merck specifically on how to get the PIN. You can see on the screen here the 1-800 number that's available there, uh, call or call center. They're available from 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. Eastern Time, uh, and so they're able to help you get your PIN. Uh, there are no fees to sign up to receive your EBS PIN, so do it well in advance before it's time to submit your bid. So I'm just going to continue with some more of these questions here. Um, Uh, so Debbie is asking what, well there's a few people that have asked a similar question about uh, what the costs are for the digital seal. I will, uh, I would prefer that uh, people talk directly to either uh, Mobile Bonds and Xenex because each of them have uh, different pricing packages and a different pricing approach. So it would be uh, a bit uh, lengthy to explain over the line so it's best to just contact them directly. You have the coordinates there on the screen right now. And these would be the two best uh, person to provide you the exact information on, on uh, the pricing structure that they have for each of their uh, system and what you can and, and cannot do. Thank you, Richard. Uh, OK. Is there, uh, in, sorry, George is asking, in the event that you want to pull the bid, how quickly can you do it after submission? Oh, that whole process would take 15 or 20 seconds. Yes. A few clicks of a button. Uh, I'm trying to read through all of these. Okay. Uh, Okay, so Rose is asking about DCC hosting training sessions on how to submit bids. Please visit the DCC website. Okay, so she was answering her question. Thank you, Rose. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so Margaret is asking, when you are talking about digital seals, do both the surety company seal and the vendor company seal have to be digitally verified? Yes. It's part of the verification process. When me as an owner and, and our staff in the contracting department click on, on the bond, as, as Steve and has explained uh, very briefly, if you want more details on how the actual process works, again, you, you can call either of those two companies. They can, they can arrange for a, a demo or provide some additional information. But uh, when we click on it, it, it uh, really tells us uh, a whole bunch of information on on who applied the signature, when they applied the signature, and the same for the seal. So it's, it's it provides a, a complete audit record of what was done to that bond and when it was done. So that's the verifiability part of it that's important to all the owners. Okay, great, thank you. Uh, so Joanne is asking, our company already has a Merck's PIN and a designated person to submit bids. For the bonds, can it be someone else in the firm that be the authorized person for the bonds? The, the PIN is a distinct, unique PIN to your company um, and, is, and represents that uh, authority to bind. Um, as long as the submitter has access to that PIN, they are putting the company in the situation where they are committing to uh, both price and, and other terms and conditions associated with the opportunity. I think in her case she's asking if they can have a second authorized person. You would not have two pins, it would still be one pin per organization. Yes. Yeah, and maybe I can just, uh, maybe I understood the question differently there, but you would have, because we, we explained earlier that Merck's and the Mobile Bonds and Xenex are, are two 
two separate they have two separate functions in the process. So you could have as an example for for maybe a larger companies. Uh, sometimes some of their senior estimators actually have the authority to submit tenders on behalf of the company and maybe that senior estimator would have access to to the PIN so that they can deposit uh, the bid on behalf of the company. However, maybe that same company has decided that that senior estimator is not the one that's authorized to do the digital bonds or the bonds. Somebody else in the company uh, does the bonding. So that other company can certainly uh, approach mobile bonds and Zenex, get the bonds from them, and then internally inside the company, once that person who is authorized to get the bonding for that company can certainly email it to the senior estimator who is the one responsible for making sure that bid gets transmitted into the Merck system. So the two can be uh, independent. It really depends on on your company structure. From some of the larger companies, this is a scenario that could certainly happen. Excellent, thank you. Um, so yes, a, a bunch of people are still asking for the presentation and yes, you will receive an email with instructions on how to access this information. Uh, I'm trying to be mindful of the time. We have a couple of minutes left, so I'm just going to try and have a look at the other questions that are available, but we will make these questions uh, available with uh, some answers to everyone here today. Um, so Christy is asking, how does the broker get notified from the contractor of an EBID required? That responsibility is with the contractor to contact the, their broker. Right. Yeah, maybe Loris can, can expand on that. He explained it quickly, but uh, maybe he can explain a bit further. Okay, uh, the, the, the actual process of ordering a bond for, for a contractor to order the bond from their broker does not change. Uh, it is exactly the same way you do it currently. Once you downloaded all the bid documents and you know exactly what the project requirements are from the bonding perspective, you, you contact usually your broker or whoever is going to give you the bonds and uh, they, you, you transfer that information to them whichever way you do it currently, whether it's by phone, by fax, whichever way you do it, that doesn't change. And then the broker then will prepare the document uh, and from there on, it's just the signing and sealing process that is electronically done. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, and then, I guess one more question. Uh, who is it that, or sorry, Susan is asking, who is it that actually subscribes to Xenex or mobile bonds? Is it the broker, sorry, is it the contractor or our insurance company? All, all three groups involved in the obtention of the bond need to be registered with the system. So the CERTE needs to be registered in the system, and I'm told by the two companies that all the big CERTEs in Canada have already registered with both systems. Your broker must be registered in the system that you two choose together, and then the bidder or the contractor that's going to sign the bond needs to be registered with mobile bonds or Xenex so that you three, the three parties involved in that bond are all registered with one of the, at least one of the two systems. Okay, and then one last one, uh, Tara is asking, uh, she was under the impression that we would show how the broker compare, or sorry, prepares the bond. Um, but. Well, I mean, the broker would have, a, as, as Loris just explained, the broker would have a Word document, and they would just type in the information, and then uh, with that document prepared, without the signatures and the seals, they would then upload that Word or PDF document, whatever, as Loris explained, into Xenex or Mobile Bonds, and it's in that, that, that software or application that we're they would then invite the contractor to come in and sign, digitally sign and seal uh, the bond, and they would digitally sign and seal the bond as well. Once all that's applied, then the bond gets locked, and now it can be extracted from the system, and both systems produce a PDF file that is then available to upload into Mercs with their bid. Okay, great. 
Um, so if you wanted to have a demo for that, Tara, um, you either contact Mobile Bond or Xanax Enterprises and uh, they'll be able to take you through that process. Okay, so uh, there's, there's still some other questions that have uh, appeared, but they, we will make them available to you on the site. So do look out for that email that you will receive um, that will include the, the, the Q&A, so from today, the PowerPoint, or the slide deck from today, as well as the link to the recording uh, from today's webinar. So with that, I would like to thank all of our presenters that were here today, Steve Ness, Steve Muxlow, uh, Loris Haig, and Richard Ali, as well as Paul Bodnoff, who is sitting in front of me. Um, thank you again for joining us today, and have a wonderful day. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you. Bye.